everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I have my June book haul and wrap up. So June was an interesting month. Um, my daughter turned one at the very end of June, and we just had a first birthday party for her, so a lot of the end of June was getting things ready for that. Also, I got really, really obsessed with playing games on Steam, but through my Backbone controller that like hooks onto my phone, so reading fell by the wayside. So I will just preface this by saying my haul is much bigger than the books read. I will have it split up. We're going to do the haul first. I will put a timestamp down below. So if you do just want to see the wrap up, you can jump over there. Um, but so even though the book haul is bigger than some months, we're putting it all together still in this one video because I don't have a lot of things to wrap up this month. So hopefully that makes sense. This stack over here is, is the haul. I have 25 things to haul today. Um, only 15 of them count for like my TBR because some of these are things that I've already read or duplicate copies of things that I've already hauled this year that are on my TBR. So I'm not having to put them on twice, if that makes sense. So the first stack of books that I have here are book box books. So the first five I have here. I actually did a dedicated unboxing video. It was three book boxes, Afterlight, Illuma Crate, and Rainbow Crate, and I actually unboxed everything in that dedicated video. Um, but so there are five books here. So the first two that we have here are from Afterlight. We have The Soulmate Equation and The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. So The True Love Experiment was the Afterlight book and The Soulmate Equation was an add-on that we could do, but I absolutely loved The Soulmate Equation, five out of five stars. So when that was an option, I obviously added it on. I really love how they did these. I love the art on them. I love the edges that we have here. And then one thing that I really, really enjoy is the fact that there is something underneath the dust jacket and it is reminiscent of the original books, like the original covers from the US. Like I just absolutely love that fact. So yeah, these are the first two. Then I unboxed Illumicrate, which had Witch King by Martha Wells. This is a fantasy but Martha Wells, the ones that I've read before, are from the Murderbot series, which is sci-fi. So I'm very curious about this one. Again, the edges and everything are gorgeous. Um, this one did have some end paper art, which is really cool. We have like this whale with a Nautilus shell on it, and I'm just very curious about like what we're going with that. And then we also have the, this one. And again, very, very pretty book. So yes. And then for Rainbow Crate, we had an indie book that comes in because they do two books in every box, an indie book and a traditionally published. The indie book was The Fate of Stars by S.D. Simper. So this is going to be a romance with mermaids or sirens. I believe this one is sapphic. It's very shiny. Um, also, again, has really cool end papers. And I really enjoy the edges on this one because they look like scales. And then the traditionally published book that we got from Rainbow Crate was The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Oshiro. This is the Rainbow Crate dust jacket that comes with the book. Um, they do also keep the original one, which is this. And this is going to be uh, a Nico and Will story. And I'm very, very curious to see where this is going to go. I have not finished some of the like spin-off series, an extra series by Rick Riordan, but I have done all the Percy Jackson ones and all the Heroes of Olympus ones, and so I think I'm okay with jumping in here if I want to, although I do also have like the beginning of the Apollo storyline as well. So we shall see, but like, it's gorgeous. And then I do actually have a couple other like book box books that I had ordered, but these are like special editions. They weren't actually like a subscription. So the first one I have here is Painted Devils by Margaret Owen. This is the sequel to Little Thieves, which I have back here. I read it in January of this year, and it was one of my favorite books so far this year, five out of five stars. So it's on my favorite shelf, and of course, that means I needed to get my hands on an Illumicrate version 
of the sequel. I don't know where this story is going to go because the first one I felt ended pretty well as a standalone, but it is going to follow the characters again through some other sort of happenings. So yes, I really like the cover. We do have the edges here. And then the one thing that I really, really love about these Illumicrate editions is we do have art on the naked hardcovers. Um, and it's by the author. And so just like, come on, like these are so cool. That's part of the reason I was like, I knew I needed to have this one because I really like how it looks naked. And so yeah, that's how I read them. I don't read with the dust jackets on. I know some people do, but I don't. And so when it's a naked hardcover and it's pretty, I really do enjoy that. So that was another one. And then the last ones that I have here, again, from Illumicrate or were these technically Afterlight? I don't know. Afterlight is Illumicrate, uh, but I got Boyfriend Material and Husband Material by Alexis Hall. I have read Boyfriend Material before. Absolutely loved it. Five out of five stars. I do have Husband Material in a paperback, um, so this is not adding anything onto my TBR, but I have not read it yet. So again, the art on these is just so good. Um, this one for boyfriend material, the edges have like cameras and stuff, which is so cool. Um, and then we actually do have like the inside flap of the dust jacket has art. We do have art on the end papers. These ones are also signed, like actually signed. Some things from Illumicrate are sometimes digital signatures, which I'm not too mad at. Um, but yeah, I think the pictures, the end of papers are the same. They are, but the end of the dust jacket is slightly different on each side does that make and then so we have husband material same characters um a sequel to the first book which didn't necessarily need a sequel so i am curious where this is going to go because it was a romance we had a happily ever after or a happy for now for that but i really love that first one so i'm very curious about this the edges here have umbrellas i don't know what that means oh and here's the back so we have art on the back and then again, let's start. Oh, I didn't show. We do have stuff on the naked hardcover. I didn't show the other one. I'll get, I'll get to that. The end papers do have art. I love the Polaroid aspect. And so here is one flap of the dust jacket. And here is the other. So again, it wraps around the whole thing. And then, like I said, I forgot to show what's underneath, but I'm sure we can all guess. Cameras. I do love it though because again anything on a naked hardcover that's more than just like the plain color I love okay now we have a pre-order that I ordered from Barnes & Noble which is the only one left by Riley Sager so this is his newest book mystery thriller book uh, because that's usually where everything ends up with his some are more mystery some are more thriller um, and this is one that I'm very curious about I have not read the one that came out last year, The House Across the Lake. Um, but this one is about like a woman who I guess was accused of killing her family when she was younger, but nobody was like fully able to prove it. She's never talked about it. And now somebody is going up to this like house to be a caretaker of her because she is much, much older now and apparently wants to talk about things. I have no idea what that means um but because these are mystery thrillers he's usually really good as an author about pulling out either reveals or twists that i don't see coming um or ones that like maybe i did see but he convinced me it was something else like i'm very curious to see where this one's gonna go then we have some kickstarter books the first one i have here is Punzel by a l davidson this is one that is like a zine it's like 31 pages it's very small but it is a sci-fi sort of rapunzel story um and it's like set on mars i'm pretty sure again 31 pages it is indie i'm actually planning on reading it this month because it is so short um but it's just i don't know the concept got me and i think they're currently going to be working on a beauty and the beast one or something like that i know there was talk of like after this one doing another sort of sh short story sort of thing. And so, yes. Then I also got Let's Play Volume 3 by Leanne Kresik. So this is a Webtoon comic that I don't actually know if I'm up to Volume 3 or not. This might be new for me. Um, 
but I've been reading it on Webtoon for a while and so when they come out with these volumes I have been backing them on Kickstarter so I can have a physical copy um, and this is a story about gamers basically um, this character right here is like a video game streamer and then she is someone who works for her dad's company that is not video game related but she sort of does like indie game stuff on the side like she's making her own game um and it all revolves around there it is also a romance series i've really been enjoying my time with it i can't remember again i can't remember if i'm actually up to volume three or not but i have been buying every single volume because i love it so much then we have books that i found out in the wild. I picked up Loathe to Love You by Ali Hazelwood. Um, this was at my Costco and so the price of it was pretty darn good and I decided I had to get it. This is a novella collection set in the same sort of steminist world that's like the series that has the love hypothesis and those kind of books in it but these are novellas so there's three stories in here i have not read them before even though i know they came out as ebooks originally uh and so yeah i picked this up i also picked up the bodyguard by Catherine center this also was at my costco um this is a romance and the one thing that i am really intrigued by is people have read this and really enjoyed it people that i trust their opinions but one thing that they said is this is like a fade to black one there's no explicit sex scenes on page and I'm not saying I have to have sex scenes because I don't or that I never want sex scenes because like I'm okay with them sometimes um but I do like the romance specifically to be the center not lusty feelings and so this is something that I'm very intrigued by and very curious to see how this is going to go I also picked up Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. This is something that was on my radar from the get-go last year. I think it came out sometime last year. Um, I don't fully remember what it's about. Um, late October, after midnight, you're waiting up for your 18-year-old son. He's past curfew. As you watch from the window, he emerges and you realize he isn't alone. He's walking toward a man and he's armed. You can't believe it when you see him do it. Your funny, happy teenage son, he kills a stranger right there on the street outside your house. You don't know who, you don't know why, you only know your son is now in custody, his future shattered. That night you fall asleep in despair, all is lost, until you wake, and it is yesterday. And then you wake again, and it is the day before yesterday. Every morning you wake up a day earlier, another day before the murder, with another chance to stop it. Somewhere in the past lies an answer, the trigger for this crime, and you don't have a choice but to find it. So, I did know time travel-ish aspects. I'm very curious about this one. Another thing I picked up at Costco was a collection of Anne of Green Gables books. I absolutely love Anne of Green Gables. This is like the whole whole sort of series I think there's a couple technically like after this but like this is this pack that usually gets sold together um I could not pass it up I've read the first three or four before and I've just never finished the series it's something I definitely want to do but these are cloth bound books this whole collection including a journal that came with it was like 33 34 dollars at Costco um and they're adorable so let me pull them out so they all have different like flowers or plant life on the cover so this is Anne of Green Gables it's like one of those things where it feels smaller than I originally thought it was going to be even though like you can see the size in the box but like it is such good quality they are cloth bound the paper is actually really nice but the text is a little bit small because they are actually a little bit smaller in like size and weight than I originally thought they were going to be but like it's adorable and on the chapter headers we do have like little flowers and stuff so that's Anne of Green Gables we also have Anne of Avonlea Anne of the Island Anne's House of Dreams Rainbow Valley and Rilla of Ingleside so actually it looks like compared to everything that I actually because I have a, a series of Anne of Green Gables up here we are missing Anne of Ingleside I knew something was wrong so Anne's House of Dreams should be followed by like Anne of Ingleside then Rainbow Valley, then Rilla of Ingleside. I'm still really happy with this collection. Like, it's adorable. Um, but yes, we are technically missing one for some reason, but you know, it's fine. Oh, and then the journal, in case you're interested, is this. Um, in the journal, we do have like little um, decorations, like little illustrations, like there's a house and there's some books. And every so often they do have quotes it's like this is a very common one it's the I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers so there's lots of little things like that it's it's adorable and the last 
physical book that I have here is Ronan Boyle and the Bridge of Riddles by Thomas Lennon. This says it's a Barnes Noble exclusive. I have never seen this book before. I got this at the Dollar Tree <laughs> for like $1.25. It is a hardcover. It's one of those things that because it's a hardcover um, and it has an illustrator, like there are illustrations and things in here. I'm curious. I literally have no idea what this is about except for apparently Irish sort of stuff. Um, but like it literally starts off as like a special like document, secret document. I don't know, something like that. Trainees of the special unit. I have no idea if I'm even going to like this. This is middle grade, 100% middle grade, but it was $1.25 for a really nicely looking hardcover. So even if I don't like it, it wasn't like I spent a bunch of money. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's blurbed by Patton Oswalt and Weird Al Yankovic, which I feel like is very, very interesting to be blurbed by, but like, I'm curious. Then I do have a little bit more here for our haul. We have some ebooks. Now, for these ebooks, there was a Stuff Your Kindle event at the very end of the month. On the last day of the month, every quarter, there is a Stuff Your Kindle event, or I guess Stuff Your E-Reader, because it's not just Kindle. Um, and this is stuff for romance, indie romance usually. Um, and so I ended up purchasing five, purchasing. They were free. They were free. I picked five though. So, so the first one here is Daughter of Shadow by LJ Swallow. Um, so this apparently is a book that used to be called Dragon Soul and is now changed title, changed cover. Um, I personally recognize this author's name, so that was part of the reason I grabbed it, um, but it is going to be a why choose romance, fantasy romance, apparently has dragons and stuff, um, so I was curious. I don't know much else about it. It says the dragons are dead, the Ebon Queen has destroyed the elven realms and the courts are at war. The queen's dark magic grows in strength and the kingdom is losing the battle against her. Three men are sent from the Silvercrest court stronghold to seek others to aid their cause. Uh, I'm assuming they end up finding our main character who is supposed to defeat this person. That's all I know. Then I picked up The Eighth Rank by Rose Sinclair. Um, this one is going to be male male romance based on like fairy tales. Um, basically we have a character who's like the big bad wolf who has amnesia. I think he doesn't realize exactly who he is or like what he's done in the past. People are trying to tell him I think he's supposed to be like a villain but he thinks he's not. Also he has memories of Robin Hood in a way that means like maybe there's more romance there than there was before. I don't know, but I'm very curious about this sort of like take on a fairy tale or multiple fairy tales and seeing what comes of it. Then I also picked up Savage City by Elle Penelope. Elle Penelope is someone that I've read books from, absolutely loved because she did the Song of Blood and Stone books, like that whole series, the Earthsinger Chronicles, and I really loved book one. Enjoyed book two, but like book one was one of my favorites the year that I read it. And so this is a new fantasy romance thing that she has written. When a tragic accident cuts my lonely life short, instead of heaven or hell, I'm stolen away to a terrifying city of warring shifter clans, the Namali and the Fai. The Namali mistake me for their missing princess. Her father, the Dragon King, is identical to my own. But in this world, he dotes on me with the love and affection I always craved. And in a land with no tolerance for outsiders, feigning amnesia and impersonating shifter royalty may be the only way to survive. Uh, and then there's a guy, obviously. As a Fi warrior in captivity, I'm forced to serve my enemy even as I plot their destruction. The lost princess returned much changed, now the heat between us crackles irresistibly. While helping her heal using my magical talents, I begin to question what I thought I knew about the Nomali. She remains as forbidden as ever, but she also might be the key to freedom for me and my people. So again, I actually did not know any of the summary at the point when I ordered this um, because I knew the author's name and I had previously known that she was writing this. Um, so yeah, I got that one. <laughs> the next one that I picked up is Blood in the Water by Tammy Veldura. Um, this I think is the exact same author, I'm gonna be double checking just in case, um, as St. Lynn, who did Cinderella. They have um, different 
pen names. Yes, S.T. Lynn is a pen name for Tammy Veldura. So this book, Blood in the Water, was one of the ones that we could get. And so I was like, I really, really enjoyed Cinderella by S.T. Lynn, who is the same person as Tammy Veldura. Um, I want to try this out. So this is going to be male, male romance with pirates. Um, I don't know much else about it. Kairos Vindex treasure hunter has a problem. He's carrying a torch for a fellow pirate with the sexual awareness of a teaspoon. Rumors say the man has killed hundreds. He's determined to knock some sense into the workaholic that captains the Midnight Sun, but damned if he knows how. Eric Dumont has more pressing concerns than the treasure-obsessed Kairos. There's a creature inked into his chest that no witch in the seas will lay hands on for all the gold in the world. He knows it gives the Midnight Sun a cursed reputation and that doesn't make living any easier. He has heard stories of spirits trapped for lifetimes inside spelled puzzle jars. Eric tracked down three of the pieces of such a jar with a lead for number four. The fifth is still out there. So yeah, pirates, I needed to see what this is going to be about. The last one I got during the Stuff Your Kindle event is Summer's Kiss by Angel Lawson. So Angel Lawson is an author that I also picked up a different book during a Stuff Your Kindle event. I have not read it yet, but this one seemed intriguing. It is going to be a contemporary Why Choose romance. Um, Summer Barnes is on the run from her disastrous senior year of high school. From the mountain of secrets she's been keeping, she thought she could escape by running to the beach. That a little bit of sun and sand would soothe her wounded soul. She has no idea that four local beach bums will be the ones to make it all better. Is Summer prepared to open her heart or will the past keep her from taking the chance? So this summary on here does not do as much justice as the one that I saw, I think, on Amazon. She... It, it talks about local beach bums. Apparently they're surfers, according to the other summary, and it says she's running from her disastrous senior year, senior year of high school. It has something to do with her teacher. So there is the potential for certain things that I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy in this, but I was still curious enough, and it was free, to pick this up. So that was the last one I got during the Stuff Your Kindle event, and then I did forget that I actually got one other ebook before the event. It wasn't part of the event at all, um, but I wanted to obviously call that as well. It's called Zombabe by I.S. Bell. So this cover, first of all, very intriguing. I like the art style though. Um, it's supposed to be a heartwarming LGBTQ horror YA about a group of friends putting down an ancient evil inextricably linked to their sleepy town of Boldine, Maine. So two weeks before graduation, Henry Babe Simmons is resurrected by his best friend and secret crush, Eugene Dude Marsh. What is, what are these nicknames? Sorry, I'm just Babe and Dude. It's interesting. Consequences include freaking out a town who just buried you, an overwhelming hunger for human flesh, and a monster who will step in if you ignore that hunger too long. Thankfully, they have Kate Higgins on their side. She doesn't get a nickname. Um, a whiskey drinking police chief who is all too eager to get rid of the town riffraff. Armed with the power of friendship and a vague yet crucial understanding of Latin, Babe and his friends must uncover Boldine's dark secrets and kill the monster for good. It says it's perfect for anyone who wanted Jennifer's body to have a happy ending. Um, I do love Jennifer's body. So yeah, that was one that was not part of the sale. That is one that I purchased for myself because I saw something about it on Instagram and I was like, you know what? I need to read this. Um, but so that is the haul. I hope that was 25 books. That might have been more than 25 books. Um, but yeah, it was quite a big haul. So we are going to be moving into the actual reading stats for the month. I read eight books in the month of June. I believe this is the least amount of books I have read the entire year so far. Um, I also read 2,771 pages, which is also, yes, the least amount of pages I've read so far this year. Um, it was just not the best reading month. I did mention I got sidetracked with video games, so I was still doing some stuff in my like small amount of downtime, just not reading. Um, one book ended up being an audiobook. I'll just mention it here because of the fact that I did read four hours worth of an audiobook. So actually here, reading method, one audiobook, three ebooks, and four physical books. For the genre, I had three dystopians, two sci-fis, one fantasy, one romance, one plain contemporary. Um, for the format, three were graphic novels and five were novels. Um, all of them were traditionally published this month 
Um, for how I got it, one was a book that was gifted to me, three were books that I borrowed from my library, and four were books that I owned previous to this year. And for age category, I had one adult book and seven young adult books, which is sort of backwards with my normal right now. And then for star rating, so star rating, I had two three stars, two three and a half stars, two four stars, and two five stars. Um, the average is actually not too bad, it's a 3.8, but in general, not as great as I would like it to be. Um, so we're going to start with the lowest rated, which they're not bad, they're three star books, but we're going to start with the lowest rated and go up to my favorite book of the month. The first one I have here is The Faint of Heart by Carolyn Wilson. This is a sci-fi graphic novel about a world where people can actually have their hearts surgically removed and still stay alive. Um, and what this does is sort of dull emotions, all emotions, good emotions, bad emotions, everything. Um, and we're following the one girl who still has her heart in like the entire world. I thought this was a very interesting concept. I just felt it could have gone further. I was curious about how it ended. Like I wasn't entirely sure how we got from point A to point B because it didn't have enough explanation for me. And all of the relationships in it, I guess just because of the fact that like everybody doesn't have hearts, didn't feel like they were really developed. Like I was just really wishing for more of this. I liked the concept. I love the art style. I just wanted more from it. Um, the next three star I had here was You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This was my audiobook for the month because I try to read an audiobook while I'm driving Presley to appointments and things. This was cute. It was cute. It was boring for like the first half to two thirds of it. And I did like the last part more. I just don't necessarily think why a contemporary, especially when it's like focusing on things like prom, are necessarily my things anymore because this is about a girl who is queer, she's a lesbian, she's sapphic, she wants to be prom queen because in this town where she is, if you win, you get a scholarship to college. So like it makes sense. I think she's like potentially even the first black person that is like going up for like the actual crown, um, but she has to deal with hiding pieces of herself because of the town that she's in and like the school and all this kind of thing. And some of the friendships in here also just did not really work for me. Like it was a cute read. I'm glad I read it, but it didn't really do a whole bunch for me. And I think I'm just maybe growing out for sure of like the contemporary high school stories where that is the main focus of the story. Um, moving on to my 3.5s, one of them I'm going to skip until later because it's part of a series that I read um, and I want to talk about it all together. So um, I'm going to just move on to the next highest 3.5. This is one that I think I originally gave maybe a 4 when I first finished it, but after reflecting on the things I did not enjoy, I had to knock it down a little bit more because it's Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Herring Blake. I absolutely loved Lila Green, five out of five stars, one of my favorite books of that year. And this one just let me down a little bit. I think the biggest reason for this is it is a coming of age story for someone who's already in their 30s trying to figure out who they are. And I'm okay with figuring out your sexuality and stuff in your 30s and how this is. However, most of it was about lust not about romance. And so even though Astrid is trying to figure out her relationships and that she does like girls and all this kind of stuff, it was 100% about the sexual feelings and not the romance. Like I did not feel the romance between these characters. And so with all of that in there, I didn't like that. Also, apparently this happens in Delilah Green a little bit, and I don't remember, but some of the reviews mentioned that the thing I'm gonna talk about also happened in Delilah Green. The way that they talk about being sapphic in here, and I understand this is correct, a lot of people that consider themselves sapphic, it's an attraction to women and people that are non-binary, so just not men, but they use that phrase, women and non-binary people or non-binary persons, so much that like every single time that they talk about liking this it was like women and 
and non-binary people, it almost felt like they were tagging non-binary people onto the women category. Whereas like if you would have mentioned it like once or maybe twice, it was multiple times, maybe twice as just a like clarification of like, yes, I also am attracted to people that are just not men. Um, I, I would have been okay with that, but the way that it was still tacked on every single time that they mentioned it, I don't know, there was just something about it that made me feel like they're trying to say non-binary was also sort of like the woman category, and I just didn't like that. Going into my four stars, the first one I have here is The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertog. This was a really cute sapphic graphic novel about a girl who's trying to figure out how to come out and a selkie. It was really, really cute. I really did like it. I love the art style. This was a four star just because I wish there was a little bit more like the ending of it just left it a little bit too far open for me, but I did really like the development of the characters and the sort of like interaction between our main character and her family and her friends. Like I did really enjoy that. It was just, I think because it's a graphic novel, it's so short, I wanted more from the ending. Similarly, we actually have my next four star project, Not by Chelsea Ferretti. This one is another graphic novel. This is a sci-fi about a boy who's like from 1996 who gets like time traveled to the future as part of like an exchange student program sort of thing. I thought the concept was really, really cool. I liked where this story went, but there was just a little bit of something, especially between the fact that there is some romances in here that I was just wishing for more from it. But I did again, really love the art style. I love the concept. I love where this went. I was just wanting more. And then moving into my five stars, because again, <laughs> I didn't read that much this month. Um, I ended up rereading the entire Hunger Games series by Suzanne Collins. Um, so the reason I'm talking about these like this is I actually rated these two five stars again. I've read the first Hunger Games book at least six times by now, um, but Mockingjay is my three and a half. I really don't like Mockingjay compared to the other two books. Um, so these are the best books of the month. I didn't read any new books that topped my rereads and usually when I reread things, even if it is like one of my favorite books, I put them at the lower ranking of whatever star rating it is and I talk about new ones as my new favorites. I didn't have any new favorites that top these. I feel like a lot of people know The Hunger Games. These are dystopian. Um, the first two actually do have like Hunger Games elements and I really, really love those. Katniss, maybe not the best person to be in their head, like I do really love the movies too. I actually watched The Hunger Games and Catching Fire as movies before I was like, you know what, I really need to reread these books because it's been years. Um, I still really enjoy the first two so, so much. The third one takes what they're doing and has a completely different tone, a completely different makeup of everything. And one of the things I will mention about the third one, and these are books that have been out for forever. So I feel like this is stuff that people know. I'm not gonna like go into like specific spoilers. Um, but the reason this is so low as a 3.5, one, the tone is different, two, my favorite character isn't in this book very much, um, but three, whenever people do die, because like people die in The Hunger Games and Catching Fire, like obviously that's the whole point of everything, but when people die in this one, it goes so quickly with the action that it's like, oh, somebody died and literally within the same sentence, we're moving on to something else. So there's never enough time to even feel the grief we should feel for characters that we love dying. Because there are characters that you grow to love over these books that don't make it past the third book, but because of how quickly everything is moving, I, there's no time to grieve. And because of that, it just feels flat. I don't like that personally. So yeah, Hunger Games and Catching Fire, best books of the month, even though I've read them multiple times already. I'm hoping for better reads in this next month coming up because I definitely need more new books that I love. So this is going to be it. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I do have videos coming out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I will see you then. Bye.